So what is probability and what are statistics? We're gonna cover probability at first, okay? And so everything about this chapter is how we count things. That's what we're gonna be looking for. And to be able to count things and to find out the amount out of something, initially you have to know how many somethings there are in the first place, okay? So if I were gonna say there are six boys out of eight sitting in here, or do we have, yeah, two, four, six, eight, yeah, sitting here. Um, then we would say six out of eight. We could write it six, eight, right? Because this would say boys to total amount of students. I would say girls in here are two out of eight girls to total amount. It's easy for me to count how many students are in here. I can just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and say there's a total amount. But when we have large amounts, or when we're using maybe those sequences that we used in the last chapter, we have different ways that we can count the total amount. So to count up, we have to have a total, we have to learn some counting methods for that. So the very first thing that we're gonna learn is called the fundamental counting method. And I just put some fun examples of like, um, is there really a random chance that you can predict things? Baskin Robbins says they have 31 flavors. Like they say you could come every single day of your life and never run out of flavor combinations. Is that really true? People say, oh, there's a million options. Are there really a million options? We're gonna get to learn how to decide whether these statements that are made are really true or not, okay? So if we have more than one thing of different types of things, we use the fundamental counting principle. And there are formulas for it and then some logic behind it, and I'm gonna try to tie both of those in for those who learn a little differently, right? So if I'm going to count up maybe the amount of chairs and the amount of tables that we have, I might have chairs and I would have tables. Chairs and tables don't have anything in common. And so they have to be in different categories. So when we have different categories of items, then we have to multiply them together. So this is an example. We have tree diagrams um, that can be done that way, or we're gonna use the blank method. I really like using the blank method. So say you say, we all take classes at Keystone. As a high schooler, you have two classes in the morning lunch and two classes in the afternoon. If there were five options, you know, they, send, they just sent out the schedule, how many different schedules could you technically have? For it. And so we have two different things that overlap. We have our first hour and we have our second hour. So while they're both class hours, they can't occur at the same time. They are separate events. Okay? So like chairs would be one event is something separate versus table is something separate. So we would have in our first hour, we have five options that we could choose from. In our second hour, we have five different options that we can choose from. These are separate events. We're gonna count how many that there would, how many options there would be. If we did a tree diagram, if you picked first hour one for your first one, class number one, then for hour two, you would have five options. So you could take class one and then one, one then two, one then three, one then four, one then five. Does that make sense here? But then if you chose, maybe class two for the first one, you'd still have those options. The order matters because if you take English first and then math, you're going to have maybe different teachers and different students in the class than if you take math first and then English. So in all of these ways, the order matters because it's going to give you a different outcome. The shortcut way that we write this with the fundamental counting method is that we have five options for our first class hour, five options for our second class, and we multiply those together, and that's gonna give us 25 different options, okay? So the generic way, we always have to have a generic way, states that if you have something that can occur in M number of ways, 
and you have another separate something. These are not overlapping events. Another separate something that can occur in an n number of ways. These are just our um, variables. Then the total ways that they can be combined is through multiplication. So m times n. Right? So let's look at this one. You make a sandwich with four types of meat and three types of bread. So we're going to use our little blanks. Our first event or our first way is going to be meat. So I've labeled it meat underneath. Our second way is going to be bread. I label bread underneath there. I've got four options for meat, three options for bread. So we would have 12 separate choices. If we did that in a tree diagram, you'd have your first option of meat. So you might have turkey with rye, turkey with white, turkey with wheat. And then you would have another type of meat. You might have ham with rye, ham with white, ham with wheat. So we could list them all out and we would come up with 12 separate options. I like using the blanks and then labeling the blanks underneath so I know what I'm working with. So that's a way that you can do that as well, okay? Here's another thing. You're looking in your closet. You're trying to decide what to wear when you come to class so that you can show your new shirt off to Miss Thomas, right? You've got two pairs of pants, five shirts hanging up, four shirts, four shoes, and either you can wear a hat or not wear a hat, and it's not the first day, so you don't get a hat. It's not a dress up day, right? So today is actually a no hat day. So we would have different options, a pants section, a shirt section, a shoes section, and then whether you have a hat or not. We're going to plug in the different amounts of items that we have to count in that and they would all be multiplied together. So with these options, you would have 80 different outfits that you could wear because today is not a dress up day. We would change the hat. Do you really have an option for a hat? No, no it can only be a knot. So you only have one option there. So that means today you would only have 40 options of an outfit to be able to wear, okay? So work this one out. Tell me what you think. We've got three different cars, two tire types on those cars, four rim options, and you can get a convertible or a hard top. How many options of a car, if you were gonna pick out a car that you would get? 48, right? So you chose to do three times two times four times two. Six times eight is 48 different options. So this fundamental counting method works great when you've got all of these separate events that the event has no effect on each other. Whether that means the event is something completely different, like between a car or a tire, or whether it's an event that happens first or second. So let's think about it. If I have a die, and I'm going to roll a die twice, are those two separate events? Do they have an effect on each other? No, because when I roll the first die, I can get one out of six options. When I then I have to pick that die up. Does it matter what I got on the first one? Does that change what I got on the second option? So if I had a die and I was rolling it twice, I would just have roll number one and roll number two. So while they're both a die, they are separate events because they don't have an effect on one another. Okay, now, if I have all these candy bars, so I'll take the three Hershey's, and we're going to pick from them, okay? So from my first pick, how many options do I have? Three, okay? So I pick from that. From my second pick, how many options do I have? Yes. Two. Are these separate events? Yes. Completely separate events? No. The second 
one was dependent upon the first one. What if I did this? This might help make it easier. Three different candy bars. Okay, Eden picks from these candy bars. What one would you want? The Hershey's. Okay, now Joshua picks from what's left. Do you have the same options that Eden has? No, you don't have the same options because what she chose affects what you get an option of choosing. So those are dependent events. So what we're looking at initially here are se completely separate events to where if Eden was picking, she has options, and then I turn around and I ask Joshua to pick, and he has the exact same options as what Eden has. Does that make sense? Questions on this? Okay. So now let's look. What about these combinations taken from a single set of items, just like we had with the candy bars? Okay. So let's think about this one. It's a good, great example that we have often. License plates. Okay, you drive around and you see license plates everywhere. It says in Oklahoma, a standard Oklahoma license plate has three letters up front followed by three numbers. Okay, so how many options are there? There are two different ways to address this and something that we need to know on the front end. Number one, are the options repeatable or are the options not repeatable? Hi, can I get the yearbook picture really fast? Sure. different events for these license plates, we have to know up front, are the events allowed to be repeatable? Okay, so it says when the letters and the numbers are allowed to be repeated, the events are truly independent. That means if you could have CCC 3333 as a license plate, okay, then we have completely independent events. So when we're looking through the fundamental counting method for um, choosing our options, if we were going with our letters, for A to Z, how many options would we have? 26. 26. 40. 46. A through Z? How many letters in the alphabet? 26, that's right. 26, okay? If we can repeat them, it means that whatever I choose from the first one, doesn't affect my second one. So how many options do I have for my second letter space? Same thing. 26. And for the third? Oh. It's also 26. Now, if I have options, the order would matter, right? Because MUT would be a different license plate than TMU. Correct? So in this case, the order matters for these. So we're looking at different options where the order matters. Okay, then for one, zero through nine, we have 10, 10 numbers. They can be repeated. So as we look through that, we would have Oklahoma has 17 million oh options oh of license plates. So that's not including the special. Not including the special. All right. Now, what if they say you can't repeat them? How would we fill in our choices? So let's look at when it says they're not repeated. When we pick our first number, we have 26. But now we've used up a letter. So instead of having 26 for our second option, we have 25. Now we've used up another letter, so we have 24. So we are moving down. Okay, and the same for numbers we're moving down. So we have 8 million less license plate options when we say you can't repeat a letter or you can't repeat a number. Okay, could we figure out something if we said you cannot repeat a letter but you can repeat a number? Yeah, 26, 25, 24, 10, 10, 10. It would be 10, 10, 10, yes. So we have lots of different ways that we can count depending upon the parameters that we've been given. So why do we need to know how to count these things? Well, counting 
gives us that total amount on the bottom for our out of how many. Okay, so we're going to have to use this method. Um, and this, uh, the chapter lesson one and two, it, we're going to go over permutations and combinations and what the difference is between them. Okay, so permutations is when the order matters. So if I line up, if I say first, second, and third, and we're running a race, and I come in first, it's the same three people. So will Jason Joshua run a race? If Will comes in first, it's a different order than if Jace comes in first, right? So order absolutely matters for a permutation, okay? Um, and then there are two subcategories. So again, we always learn our big ones and then we break them out into smaller pieces. So we've got this section where order matters with permutations and then we've got order doesn't matter with combinations. Under order matters, we have, are things allowed to be repeatable? Like with the license plate, is it allowed to be repeatable or is it not allowed to be repeatable? So we're kind of breaking this little tree down into different little sections, okay? So with a permutation, if we have this order matters, just like I had with the candy bars, we're going to place our spot. Consider I have three candy bars, right? So I'd have three spots. I'm going to use them all up. I'm going to count all of the candy bars that we have. So we're going to have three spaces and I hand them out. So I have three options for my first one. Then I have two options for my second one and one option for my third one. Order would matter for that because if I'm starting with Tessa and I'm passing these out on the right side, then whatever I start with affects what everyone else behind them gets, correct? Now, when we use up all of our options in all of the ways and we use, start at the top and we make our way all the way down to one with our multiplication, we have factorial. Have you seen that word before? Yeah, so we it's in Algebra 1, we hit on it before. Factorial simply means we're going to start at that number. If I have 5 factorial, and I'm going to use up all of the numbers until I get to 1. So I'd have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Right? Your calculator has a factorial button. So while we will often use the blanks to figure something out, um, then you have to individually count for your calculator um, for it. If we choose to use factorial, we can use the factorial button on our calculator. So that's going to be some difference in the formulas that we have going forward. Right? <clears throat> so in general, the number of different permutations so permutations is simply a word that means ordering something, an order of something. It's that math vocabulary word. So if we're going to order n number of objects, if I have three objects that I'm gonna order, if I have five objects I'm going to order, the number of ways that they can be ordered will be the number factorial. So if I have three objects to order, I would have three factorial ways to order it. Why are we not repeating? Why are we going down? Because we are ordering objects from a single group, which means that when we pull one out, my next object that I pull out is in a smaller group. So we're not replacing we're not replacing in it and saying, um, you know, without re with replacements of it. So when I pull something out of a group, I don't have that in my group anymore. So now I have one less. I pull that one out. I now have one less options. We're going to keep pulling out. So we're going to go all the way down till we get to one, and that will give us the number of orders that we have. So we have eight students in our class today. How many different ways could I line you up? First, we ask the question, does the order matter? It matters because if I line you up and I take a picture and then I rearrange you, 
Same students, but you're not in the same order. So when the order matters, I'm going to put my line and I'm gonna say, who's gonna be first? How many students do I have to choose from that can be first? Eight. Now someone is standing here. So now in our group over here with students, I only have seven people to pick from. Now that person's standing here, so there's no longer standing in the group. So now I only have six people to pick from. See where we're headed? So now my group has less people and we're gonna go all the way down until I use up every person and everyone is standing in line. So if I had you guys line up, there would be 40,320 different ways that we could line up today. We don't have time to try all of those ways. Okay, you can plug in on your calculator if you have a scientific calculator, if you have a phone, if you use your phone and you turn it sideways and it gives you all the different options, there's an exclamation button. To use it, you type the number and then you type the exclamation and it will give you the factorial. So if you type in eight, an exclamation, you guys can try it right now. Make sure you get the same, same answer I get so you know how to use it at home. You could also do eight times seven, times six, times five, times four, times three, times two, times one, and get the same answer. But one keystroke is faster than eight, or 16 if you have, or 15 if you add all the multiplications in there. Okay. So what would this one be? And you can leave your calculators out. If I give you five assignments to complete, how many different ways can you complete them? So first we ask the question, does the order matter? Yeah. The order in which you could, so if the order matters, we are using a permutation. It is written with a P, so you will see that. Okay, how many ways could we complete them? 120 different ways. Excellent. Okay. You can use the blank method by writing out five different blanks and saying for my first option I have five. Second four, working down like that. Okay. Now, let's go back to when we were lining up. We know that there's 40,000 ways that you guys could line up today. What happens if I don't want to line up all eight of you? I only want to pick three people. So if I only want to pick three people, I only have three blanks to fill, okay? Can we still use our fundamental counting principle for this? Yes, okay? Are we gonna be able to expand its use? Yes, so this is, I'm gonna start writing some notation that you're gonna need to know and understand where we're at. And we're gonna walk through the logistics of what this looks like, okay? So if I only have three spots, how many people can I choose for the first spot? One. Out of the class? Eight. Eight people. I have so much to Perfect. Three. Hey, you're answering. How many people do I now have to choose for my second spot? Seven. 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 How many do I have to choose for my third? Six. Six. Okay. Well, my fundamental counting method said that I had to go all the way down to one if I used factorial, right? Kind of leave this over here. But I only want these three spaces. I don't want the rest of it. So I can plug into my calculator eight times seven times six. Okay. We're also going to see that there's a formula that goes with this. Okay. So we've got this up here. Now, how can I write this? I have eight people, so I'm saying it's a permutation. Permutation uses the letter P. This means the order matters. Of eight things, so the first number on the left side, you may also see it written like this. 
but it's still going to be on the left side. It might either be on the top or the bottom. Our book uses the bottom. Sometimes on a te stator test, you'll see it at the top. Eight things taken three at a time. So we read this notation, a permutation of eight things or eight events, eight things taken three at a time. Okay. So our number on the left tells us how many is in our initial group. The number on the right tells us how many spaces we have. Okay. Or how many uh, that we're adding, we're doing together. Okay. We know that logically, this means eight times seven times six. I have three choices, or three spaces that I'm filling, and I'm filling them with eight times seven times six. So let's look at the formula. We have eight factorial on the top. If we wanna use the factorial, because our calculators have a nice factorial button that's easy to use. So if I started, I would have eight factorial but I don't want the rest of it. How can I get rid of this part? Okay, do you see why I wrote fa five factorial here? Because five factorial would be the same as five times four times three times two times one. And so instead of writing it all out, I just said, just stop there and say, just keep moving on. How can I get rid of that? Could I, divide this whole thing by that amount. If I have the same on the top and the same on the bottom, anything divided by itself is equal to one. So if I start on the top and I have eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, and I say the only thing I really care about are these first three spaces, I can get rid of the rest by dividing by whatever I want to get rid of. Correct? And that, all of those would cancel out? Does this make sense when it's marked out? So I rewrote it, eight times seven times six times five factorial. We're rewriting this five down to one as five factorial divided by five factorial. So I'm canceling out all the parts that I don't want and I'm left with what I do want. Why would I wanna use it like this? Because I have a calculator that gives me a factorial button. Okay. So why don't you plug in eight times seven times six on your calculator and tell me what you get. 336. 336? when you actually just plug those in, okay? Now, plug in eight factorial instead. Do eight and push the factorial button. 40. Then do divide. 40, 5, 5, 5. Then click divide. And then hit five in the factorial button. And then enter. What did you get? So we got the same answer. One, we were able to use our factorial button on our calculator versus having to type this in. When it's just three numbers, it's easy, but what if I had 20 and then I want, you know, what if I'm doing 100 factorial and I want to take it 10 things at a time? Do I want to multiply the 10 or do I just want to say 100 and then get rid of the 90 that I don't need? So this is, sometimes when it's short, you're like, it's easier for me to just plug in the numbers. But as we move to bigger numbers, we're gonna need that. So let's go back to our formula. I wanted to get rid of everything I didn't need, all the parts we weren't taking. So is there a way that I can go from eight to three and I know I have to have this five on the bottom because I want everything past five to be gone. Can I get a five from eight and three? How can I get that five? Subtraction. Subtraction. 
So we have this formula that simply says I'm going to take my first number and I'm going to subtract my second number and know that it's going to give me that bottom number to cancel it all out. So that is written, let's see, it is written like this, a permutation of an n number of things, so these are our total amount of things, taken a certain number at a time, means we've got our factorial of our total amount, and then we're going to get rid of the extras. The extras come from our total minus how many we have. Okay. So we worked through the logic of it. Now we see the generic. The generic doesn't make sense until we have kind of looked at the logic portion of it. So let's work out a couple of different ones. Don't do that. Okay. So, let's do a couple examples. If I have seven things, and I'm going to take two of them, it would be written permutation of seven, two, okay? So I'm going to take two. I have two options that I'm choosing from. So how many options do I have for the first choice? Seven. How many options do I have for my second choice? Six. So we know that I've got 42 options that I can pick from. If I'm using my calculator, I'm going to say seven factorial, right? So I've got seven times six, five, four, three, two, one. But I only want the seven and six. I want to get rid of everything else. How do I get rid of the rest? I have to divide by it. So I'm going to divide by 5 factorial. So if I have 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial, that gives me just 7 times 6. All it leaves is the 7 times 6. I, all I wanted it to leave was the 7 times 6. I got my 5 from 7 minus 2. Seven things, take it two at a time, gets rid of five groups. All right, so what if we have 50 things taken five at a time? What would that look like? How would we write that? Fifty factorial. Over fifty minus five factorial. Okay. So the difference is I could say I'm taking five things. So by the fundamental counting method, I know that I could go fifty, forty-nine, forty-eight, forty-seven, forty-six, and I could use my calculator and just punch in those five numbers, multiply. Or I can punch in 50 factorial and divide it by 45 factorial because I'm getting rid of all the rest past here. I hit 45 and I want to go all the way down to 1, 45 factorial. Right? Same answer. So what if we take all of the whole group? We're back to the beginning. I have eight candy bars. I'm going to pass out all eight candy bars. So I start at eight. I'm using them all the way up until I get down to one. That means I just did eight factorial, correct? So does that work with our formula that we have? If I have five things and I take all five of them, Five things taken five at a time. That means I have five blanks because I'm taking five at a time. So what you take at a time are your blanks. And I start with five options. It's going to use up my numbers all the way down to one. So I ended up with my full five factorial. There's nothing else I want to get rid of. 
So how do we plug that in? Five minus five gives me zero. Zero factorial is a special number called one. One factorial is one, but zero factorial is also one. And you say, Miss Thomas, how can logically zero be equal to one? Okay, I'm not saying zero is equal to one. I'm saying zero factorial. Factorial is telling us the number of ways that we can take things in these permutations. How many ways can I take zero things? One way, by taking none. None is an option. Does that make sense? Okay, so you need to know that zero factorial is one. Otherwise, can we divide by a zero? No. no, it's undefined. So this does not give us an undefined. This says five factorial divided by one, which is simply five factorial. So we got the answer that we knew in the first place. Right? So what happens if we have duplicates? Okay. Mom is a great example. If we're ordering words, let's order the word bed first, since we all wish we were still there. Okay, how many different ways can I order the letters in the word bed? Six. Three times two times one, three factorial. I'm taking all three of them. I would write this a permutation of three things taken three at a time. I have six different ways. And if I wrote them out, we could see all of the different ways. We would see all the different ways and they would all look completely different, correct? However, what if I have the word mom? Okay, we would say I have three things, taken three at a time, it would still be written this way. So you'd say I have six different ways of writing this, right? So I have M-O-M, M-M-O, Undistinguishable, sorry, distinguishable ways that we've written it. Nope, because I have two of these, I have two of those, and two of those. Now, if I had written them in colors, we might be able to tell the difference, correct? But we have duplicates here. So if we were looking at a permutation where it actually has duplicates with it, okay? and we're arranging it in different orders, we have to remove the duplicates because when it asks you for distinguishable ways, that means you've got to be able to tell that one is different from the other. In this case, you can't tell that the first mom is different from the last mom. They look exactly the same. Okay, we have to remove the duplicates. So how do we remove the duplicates, okay? Because we're gonna, we have to keep our same permutation group. So we have a certain number of things taken, certain number at a time, okay? We are going to remove our duplicates by dividing out each options factorial. So in this case, we started with six. We thought there were six and there was really how many? There was really three. How do we get from six to three? Half it. Half, right? So we did six divided by two, gave us that three. So where did we get the two from, okay? If we are going to list all the different options that we have, in the word mom, I would say there are M's and there are O's, correct? How many M's are there? Two. Two. How many O's are there? One. One. So we take our permutation, which was our three factorial, and we divide it by all of the amounts of each one of our parts. So for an M, M had two, so we would say two factorial, that gives us the number of M's, 
O's had one, one factorial. So our division is going to take out however many M's we had and however many extra O's we had. Now, do I really have to put this one here for the O's? No. But I wanted you to see that we will actually put every single, you can actually put every single one down here is what you're doing, is you're counting each of the individual parts that we have. So this one counts our M's, our two factorial, our second part counts our O's, our one factorial. And we get our three factorial divided by two factorial, which gave us six divided by two, and we ended up with our three. Okay, so let's look at this word. Consider the word Ohio. How many different orders do we have? And we are looking for distinguishable orders. Okay, so Ohio is four letters. How would we write that? We would write a permutation of four things taken four at a time because we want to use up all of the letters. Right? So we know that when we're dealing with a permutation, we have, what do we have on top? How many things we, we're, we are taking, right? Because if I had it, I would have four blanks. One, two, three, four. So, we have four things, so our four factorial. I want to use them all up, so then I would have four minus four factorial. So there's our initial permutation part. And then do we have any duplicates? Let's see. So I wrote out Ohio, but then make sure they are all in categories, okay? So for our O part, how many O's do we have? Two. Two. So that's going to be our two factorial. For our H's, one. we had one. And for our I's, one. we have one. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have our original formula of four things taken four at a time. So this was our N factorial over N minus R factorial. And then we're going to remove the duplicates, any duplicates that we had for the O, the H, and the I. Okay. So we get 4 factorial over 4 minus 1 gave us 0, right? 0 factorial gives us 1. So we have 4 factorial over 1 times 2 times 1 times 1. 4 factorial is really 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2. We, our 2's can cancel out, and we just get 4 times 3 gives us 12. 12 different options. Okay, so let's look at the word Mississippi. Okay, Mississippi has 11 letters. We would write it 11 things taken 11 at a time. Because I want to use up all the letters. Permutation of 11 things taken 11 at a time. Which means that in my formula, I now have 11 factorial on top, however many things I had. <laughs> then 11 minus 11 factorial. And then we're going to fill in any duplicates that we have. What do our duplicates look like? Well, I listed them out, so we did. We really only have four different letters, M, I, S, and P. So I have four different spots. I have an M, an I, an S, and a P spot. See how we have them sorted out? So how many M's do we have? One. How many I's? How many S's? Four. And how many P's? Two. Two. Why do we put the 11 minus 11 factorial? Because this is our, we have to start with our permutation of all of your things. So to find the initial amount of things that we're counting, we had 11 blanks. 
right? So I start with 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 11 things taken 11 at a time. But this is our permutation that says however many things I have taken however many at a time. Okay, so if it were like 11 taken 3 at a time. Then I would have a different... 11 minus 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. Yeah, it's just in this case, we're using up all of them. So this really turns into that one. Yeah. It turns into zero factorial one. However, I want, we're about to have a new formula. So I want you to see that this is really what we're doing. All we're doing is we're taking our original permutation formula. And now we're just taking out any extras that are duplicates underneath. So we haven't changed anything. So we're keeping it spread out. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So I have 11 things taken 11 at a time. This turns into zero factorial. I take out all my duplicates. Okay. And so then we would work that out and do 11 factorial. Now, is 4 factorial times 4 factorial the same as 16 factorial? No. No, it's not. So when you are typing in on your calculator, you cannot go, oh, 11 factorial divided by 32 factorial. It's not the same. Because this really means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And another 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then a 2 times 1. So what you can do on your calculator is you can type in 11 factorial divided by 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial, okay? And it would come out the same, okay? So let's look at all these candy bars that I brought today. If I'm handing out candy bars and I have three Snickers, three Hershey's, and two Twix, how many different ways can I hand out the candy bars? So order is going to matter, which means we have a permutation. How many things am I starting with? How many total items do I have? Eight. Eight. Okay. How many of them are, am I going to use up? Eight. Eight. I'm going to use up all eight of them. So that tells me I have eight things taken. Eight minus eight factorial. You can, yeah. I'm just not skipping because, because I'm teaching it. You can skip it in your homework, okay? And, but then do I have any duplicates? Because if I give you a Hershey's second, but then I pass it out again and you still get a Hershey's second, but it might be the different Hershey's bars, do you still have the same candy bar? Yeah, okay. So what duplicates do I have? Hershey's, Snickers, and Twix. I have three for Hershey's, threes for Snickers, and two for the Twix. Are my duplicates. Right? So what we really have, and you can see there, I think that I didn't put the zero on there, is I start out with eight things, and then I'm taking out all the duplicates that I have. So there are 560 different ways that I can pass out the candy bars. All right. So for these permutations, we are looking at when our objects are distinct, when the order matters, and whether or not we have repeats. All right. Any questions over the ones that we had? And I am going to pass out candy bars. Go back and forth. Oh, there you go. Sorry, guys. You already said Hershey's over here, right? There you go. Okay. You guys got it. Cut them in half, and you can share with your friend if you want something different. Oh,
You got a Twix and what this share voltage to the point. Okay. So where how do we move forward if the order doesn't matter? If it doesn't matter how I add them up or how we count them, okay, we are going to change from a permutation to a combination. Combination is written with a C. Imagine that. Imagine that. Okay? Order does not matter here. You will hear the term unordered groupings. Okay? It is written exactly the same, where you have an N number of things taken an R number of times. The C is what tells you the difference for it. Now, we knew that our permutations were over here. And what did we just learn at the end of permutations is we started taking out duplicates on the bottom, correct? Does it look like the combination? One, so if this is our generic combination, we have our permutation formula, but we've added something. We've added an R factorial on the bottom. Okay. When we were doing permutations with our duplicates, we took our permutation formula and we took out the factorial of whatever duplicates we had. Correct? So if we're taking something R number of times, say we're taking three things, and I'm saying the order doesn't matter, then I would have basically all three of these things would be duplicates, is what I'm telling you, when the order doesn't matter. So that means the duplicates I take out would be the same as however many I had taken in the first place. Okay. So it's, it's not coming from just a completely new place. It's coming from the logic of when I'm taking out duplicates, I have to divide out by the duplicates okay? or repeats. And so I have this slide up if you ever look through the slides afterwards, that basically we just have our permutation formula, knowing that we have repeats, but in this case, we're not having to count the certain number of repeats. What we know is that order doesn't matter, so the entire part can be repeats. That's why our, it's our R value. Why is it under divisions? Because when we were taking out the duplicates with permutations, and I had... Ohio, we took out the duplicates of the O's, correct? So we took our regular permutation, we're dividing out our duplicates. So we had two O's, one H, one I with Ohio, okay? Because we were looking at individual pieces that were duplicated. When we are looking at a combination, the entire thing, the order doesn't matter. So the entire part of what we are taking, so maybe 11 things taken three at a time, all three can be duplicates because it can all be arranged and the order wouldn't matter. If I had the word bed, I only have one, I would have six different duplicates because I'm looking at just the grouping of the letters B, E, and D in a pile. And it doesn't matter how I pile them up, I still have the same letters B, E, and D. I only have one way to have those letters. And so the entire part is a duplicate because I'm just gathering, say like when you have Scrabble and you take your seven tiles from your box, it doesn't matter how you order them on, the, on your board, Correct? You still have the exact same tile. So you only drew once. You only drew one grouping. So you only have one group of those seven tiles. It doesn't matter how you order them. So you could rearrange them a whole bunch of different ways, but you still only have one group. Okay? So what we've done in this case, instead of saying what are the individual pieces that were repeats, instead we are dividing out by saying the entire part is a repeat. So 
the entire amount that I have, every, every order of that entire part is a repeat of the group that I have. Does that help make sense? Okay. So let's look at this one. If we have a combination, so we read it exactly the same, same as a permutation, five, like in this one, combination of five, two, so five things taken two at a time. So what would that really look like if I was using the fundamental counting method? How many options do I have for my first choice? Five. How many options do I have for my second choice? Four. Four. So how many options do I have total? I have 20 options total. But if I choose red, then blue, it's the same in the group as if I had blue, then red. So every choice that I have has a duplicate. A duplicate by two, two factorial because there's two spots. Because red and blue would be the same as blue and red. The order doesn't matter. So I know that I would have 20 divided by 2, which equals 10. So let's plug that into our actual formula. If I have five things taken two at a time, I have my regular permutation formula, five things, taken two at a time, so I had to get rid of three factorial, right? Because five, four, then I would have three factorial. This is the part I want to get rid of, so I have to divide by three factorial to get rid of it. So I got rid of all the extra spots. It only leaves me with five times four on the top, and I'm going to take out any repeats. Well, I took things two at a time. I have two spaces. The entire grouping is a duplicate. So I have two factorial is my duplicate. So we're gonna rewrite that as five factorial over three factorial, two factorial. Let's just label those different parts again one more time. So this would be five times four times Three factorial. Every factorial can be broken up into a different part, and then just when you get to the number that you don't want, <coughs> it's the shortcut of saying go all the way down to one for it. So five factorial can be written five times four times three factorial. I wanted to get rid of my three factorials because I only want to take two at a time. So here's my two that I'm taking at a time. Oops, that's the wrong number there. And then I'm saying that I have duplicates of these two spaces. These are my duplicates. Any questions? Okay. So combinations are often found in pairs. They will say and or they will say or. Okay. You may have two different events. So combination means that we are actually combining things. So we should think that we're now going from having one thing to now having more than one thing. Um, so you can have and or you can have or. Can I have ice cream and a topping? Or can I have ice cream or pie? So a couple of different ways. And the ways that it, the amount of options that you have, the what we count up, depends on whether you have and or or. And just like we were doing in our last one where we had and was multiplication, or means addition. It's exactly the same here. So with sequences and series. Um, so exactly the same, and will mean multiplication, or will mean addition. So initially, we are gonna deal with or events. Um, as we move forward, they're gonna do or events first, and then we're gonna learn about and events. So let's evaluate this. So deck of cards are our common uh, problem for this, or dice. Okay, a standard deck of 52 playing cards has four suits of 13 cards if the order in which the cards are dealt is not important. So first off, order is not important. Are we dealing with a permutation or a combination? Combination. Combination, because order does not matter. 
Okay, how many different five hand card hands are possible? Okay, so we have five options. Order doesn't matter. If I'm saying I've got 52 cards and I was just using my fundamental counting method and I have five cards in my hand, how many cards can I pick from for the first one? 52. Now I can't pick that card again, so I'm going to move my way down. And I could type into my calculator these numbers and get a really big number, right? But if I have a king, queen, ace, jack, and ten, is that the same as me having a ten, jack, queen, king, and ace? No. In my hand. Well, that's kind of same. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same hand. Yeah, same hand. I'm just going to move them around in my hand, but I still have the exact same hand. Okay. So <coughs> that means I have lots of duplicates of the exact same set of cards if I were to order them in my hand, correct? How many duplicates would I have? I have five factorial duplicates. Because I could put the ace first and then rearrange all the rest of them. I could put the ten first and then rearrange all the rest. I could put the king first and rearrange all the rest. But have I changed the cards in my hand? No. So I have all these duplicates of orders, but I still have the same hand. So I have five factorial of duplicates because the order in which I have them in my hand does not matter. So we would write this, the combination of 52 cards taken five at a time. How many ways can I count them? Well, I have 52 ways that would go all the way down. What do I want to get rid of? If I write 52 factorial, I only want down to 48. So I want to get rid of 47 factorial and beyond. Correct? So how do I get 47? I'm going to take 52 minus 5 factorial, which gives me 47. So dividing by this 47 gets rid of, remember, this is what we're looking at right here. We're trying to find a way, a formula way that we can have these numbers on the top. So now I only have 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, because I've gotten rid of the rest of them. But we've already decided that we have a whole bunch of duplicates because the order doesn't matter. So I've got to divide by my duplicates. So we've plugged it into our formula that says a combination is however many things we have in number of things taken in minus R, so 52 minus 7 gives us the 47 also divided by our R value, 5 factorial. Okay. And we're going to get our 2,598,960 different ways. And what we've done is we've written a formula that we can use a calculator for that says 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is our duplicate. So what if I say I have this standard deck of cards and I have the five hands and it says in how many five card hands are all five cards the exact same suit? So now we've put a boundary on it, correct? Because here, does it matter what suit we're drawing? No, it doesn't matter what suit we've drawn. We're drawing. <clears throat> okay. So first, we have to pick a suit, and then we have to pick five cards from that suit. So now that we have an and, and is multiplication. So now we have two separate events that we are combining. So the first one is going to be how many suits do we get to choose from? How many suits are there in a deck of cards? Four. four. So we're going to have a combination of four cards, four different suits, taken one suit at a time because we're only choosing one. And so 
be about a multiplication. And after that, we're going to pick how many cards are in that suit. 13 cards, because now I have, I still have five spaces for my hand, but I'm only choosing one suit. So I start with, I only have 13 options initially, and we work our way down. Okay, so I have 13 cards, and I'm going to take them five at a time. Okay, any questions on how we've got these numbers up here for our combinations? So this is just like a regular math problem. We're going to work our first one. We've got this multiplication down the center. And we're going to work our second one. So how do we work our combination for the first one? Well, the rule for combination says I'm going to take however many I have. So four things. Here's my n value over 4 minus 1 and then times my r value. That's a duplicate, but I don't have duplicates because I only took it one at a time. So it's just one, but I'm filling in my formula. So we have four factorial over three factorial, which gives us four, which logically we knew we had four options of picking one suit of four cards, correct? Okay. Now let's look at our 13. So we've got 13 cards that we're picking from. We know we plug that in over here. I want to get rid of what part of the factorial do I want to get rid of? We want to get rid of the 8 factorial because we're only picking 5 of them. <coughs> so we took 13 minus 5 gives us that 8. So here's our 8 down here that helps us get rid of all those extra numbers that we don't want. Does the order of these cards matter? No. No, they're the same cards in your hand. So I've got a whole bunch of duplicates. How many duplicates do I have? I have five spaces, so I have five factorial duplicates. So then we just multiply those numbers out. We can use our calculator to do this one, 13 factorial divided by eight factorial divided by five factorial, and then multiply it times four if you'd like. Or you can write them out and then use your calculator with the numbers. On your um, homework, I say, please write out the math of it, and then you can use your calculator to solve it. Okay. So let's look at this one. A restaurant serves omelets that can be ordered with any of the ingredients shown. So for the first one, suppose you want exactly two vegetarian and one meat. So what would our counting, fundamental counting principle blanks look like? I would have a veggie, a veggie, and a meat options, correct? So I'm, I've got three options that I'm picking from, veggie, veggie, meat, one exactly two veggie and one meat. How many different omelets can you order? Okay, so in this one I have veggie and meat. In the second one it says, suppose you can afford at most three. So we're going to look at that one in a minute, okay? So for the first one, how many veggie options would I have for my first little blank? Six. How many veggie options do I have for the second? Five. Five. Okay. And then, logically, how many meat options do I have? Four. Four. Okay. So I could, just according to my fundamental counting method, say that I have six times five times four. Now, if I get lettuce and tomato, is that the same one as me getting tomato and lettuce? Yeah, I end up with the same sandwich, correct? So I have this, or I've got two duplicates here. So do I really have 30 times four? Do I really have that? Or do I have, I'm gonna half it, right? Because I had a duplicate. These sets are my duplicate, just like when we did Ohio. Okay. So using our fundamental counting method, we can write it out with our blanks, or we can also <coughs> write it out, sorry, we can write it out with our formula of saying, I have a combination of six veggies taken two at a time, and, and means, 
Multiplication, a combination of four meats taken one at a time. So that's our combination written up here. So I've written them both sideways. So our first little section is just using our fundamental counting method blanks. The second is using our combination notation. So six taken two at a time gives us six factorial over six minus two. Four factorial that gets rid of all the extra numbers we didn't want. We've got a duplicate with that two. And then our combination four taken one at a time is just going to be four. So what about this one? Suppose you can afford at most three ingredients in your omelet. How many different types of omelets can you order? So we could, that means we could have an omelet that has zero ingredients. Extra is just eggs, right? It could have one ingredient, two ingredients, or three ingredients. So I wrote out the combination. So for the first one with zero ingredients, we have 10 total because they didn't decide between veggie and meat. They just said ingredients. So now we're starting with 10. See where I got 10? Okay, so we have 10 ingredients taken none at a time, or 10 ingredients taken one at a time, 10 taken two, or 10 taken three at a time. Okay, so I have the different ones out here. We're gonna plug them into our formula, and we say there's 176 different options here. So sometimes, like that one, where it says you can afford at most, sometimes when they ask you what you can do, it's way more complicated than actually finding out what you can't do. Right? So when you have a problem that says at least or at most, and you go, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to figure out, you know, 5, 10, 20 different combinations, Let's look at the backwards and say, is there a way I can get the opposite number of possibilities? And if I can get the opposite, then that might help me find what I can. It'd be a lot faster. So on this one, it says a theater is staging a series of 12 different plays. You want to attend at least three of them. How many different combinations can you attend? Okay. So first off, we have to say how many play options are there in total? So we're going back to our fundamental counting method, but this one looks a little different because I have 12 different plays, so I'd have 12 different blanks, individual blanks. What are my options for my first play? I can either go or not go. So I have two options for my first one, two options for my second play, Two options for my third, and I'm going to go all the way down to 12, because they're 12 completely different events. So what I really have is 2 to the 12 different options. So there's my total. Okay? And how many can you attend? Well, 3 or 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Do we want to add all of these up? No. That's a lot of different options. So instead, what if we ask, I don't want to attend zero or one or two. Three things looks a whole lot better than those nine up there. Okay, so it's a lot less to figure out. Okay, so we're gonna choose the opposite of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out how many ways do I have of going to none of the plays? Just one, one way, right? Then I've got 12 plays. I'm just going to go to one of them. 12 plays taken one at a time. So 12 plays taken one at a time gives us 12 factorial over 11 factorial. Our duplicate is this one factorial, which I didn't write because one factorial is one. So I've got 12 ways of just going to one play. And then I've got to figure out 12 plays taken two at a time if I were to only go to two of them. So 12 over 12 minus 2 is where we get the 10. 2 is our duplicate because it doesn't matter which one I go to first, right? So we're subtract, we're dividing out by that. It gives us 66. So there's 4,017. Sorry, there's here. So we do 1 plus 12 is 13. 13 plus 66 gives us 79. Is that correct? 79 
doing ways? So that was a lot easier if I did two to the 12. So overall, there was 4,096 ways that I could attend that play. We found out that this was the total amount initially. But I don't want 79 of those ways. So how many ways do I have? I'm gonna take out what I don't want and I'm left with 4,017. So this was much easier than finding all of those other combinations and adding them together. So we worked a little back towards on there, okay? Okay. I will, we really need to hit this. So I'll try to, I'll probably do a separate video on it. Um, I'm gonna go over it. We do have about four minutes. Um, probably go to 55, right? 55. Okay. So, as we do combinations, something that is very, very special that you will want to know is called Pascal's Triangle. Have you ever heard that term? No. Okay. No. Pascal's Triangle, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert, works with binomials and trinomials and polynomials. And remember when I had you memorize all of those special things and we learned that if we were multiplying out a binomial, we knew that the inside one is gonna be two times it. When we did our trinomial, I made you memorize the formula and it was threes for it. So there were special ways that we can memorize. It comes from Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle comes from combinations. So if we start with zero objects, we've got an object of zero things taken zero at a time, means we just have one thing. Now, the second row tells us all the ways that we can take one object. Well, if I start with one object, I could either take zero of them or I could take one of them, right? For the second row, I have two objects. So now I have a choice. I could take zero of them, one of them, or two of them. See where we're headed here? If I have three objects, I have options. I could take zero, one, two, and three. When you work out the combination formula, you can use your combination and find all of this. You're going to get these numbers. One, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. Okay? This, what you're going to see is the exact same formulas for our binomials and our trinomials and our polynomials that were multiplied out. Okay? But what is something special that we see about it. Every row, every row is dependent upon the values, sorry, the values above it. Every row starts with one, and then we add the two values above it to get the number below hand. So what would be row six here? Can you... Tell me what you think. The first number is always 1. 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Perfect. So we're going to add those together, okay? This is called the binomial theorem, okay? It is a special way that we can find the first term of any binomial of any time, okay? So I'll do a separate little video on this. Um, that I want you guys to watch before you do your homework on that one. But it comes from combinations, which is why we put that, they put that in the same grouping. Is there actually a different flavor combination at Best Robins for every day of your, of your life? Well, if they have 31, and would the order matter? Uh. Like if you had mint chocolate chip and chocolate, would that be the same as having chocolate and mint chocolate chip? Yeah. It'd be the same. So it would be a combination of 31 things, and then you would have, you could take it zero at a time, or you could have them one at a time. Or seven hundred. Or two at a time. Right? 
So, so you would need to find. It would be 31 factorial. So the first one would be 30. Yeah, so if you just wanted to, if you took all 31 at the exact same time, how many options would you have? Plug that into your calculator. 31 Two. I already did it. There's an, it's an error. Error. So if you had all 31 at the exact same time, you have your calculator errors you out. But you could just take one at a time or two at a time. So you're adding do the most you would have, gave you that error, plus 30 other numbers. 